Excel can be a great tool for calculating linear calibrations and standard uncertainties and confidence intervals. Uh, but one thing uh, is that it does not produce very uh, elegant graphs. Uh, the default graphs, like one, the ones you see here for the XY plots, um, just are not appropriate for uh, using in laboratory reports or in publications. So what I'd like to do is take a few minutes to show you how we can use the tools in Excel to, uh, to pretty the chart up and make it uh, look a lot more um, fitting for lab reports and technical documentation. All right, the first thing, um, you're going to have to use some of your judgment on this. The first thing, though, is that uh, we don't need a chart title. I don't know why Excel always puts a chart title in. Let's just go ahead and click on that and get rid of it. Most of the time when you're writing something, you're going to put figure captions underneath the figure itself. Um, so uh, the first thing we want to do is get rid of that. Um, the next thing that we want to do is if we're, uh, if we're plotting multiple um, data sets, uh, we will want to have some type of legend over here. But if we're only plotting one um, set of data, uh, maybe with some linear trend lines or something on it, uh, we, we don't need a legend either. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that in this case. Now again, if you have multiple data sets that you uh, need to distinguish, uh, show differences between, you're going to need to put a legend back in. But I'll show you uh, a, an elegant way that we can do that too. Um, we have our calibration trend line. We're going to pretty that up in a minute here, too. Um, the other thing is that uh, Excel, by default, puts in these uh, grid lines here. And uh, I'm going to suggest, um, based upon the style that uh, is typical to use, um, that you go ahead and get rid of those, too. All right, select those and get rid of them. All right, the other thing that Excel does not do, by default, is it doesn't put any um, titles uh, on the axes. So what we need to do is we need to go under design, excuse me, layout, and uh, we need to look at axes titles. Alright, so I need a primary horizontal axis title, so a title below the axis usually, and um, on the vertical axis I need to put a title as well. Oops, that's not the one that I wanted though. I want a rotated title. Okay, now in the title, what we're going to do is go ahead and type the um, type the what the uh, axis represents. All right, so here we have our input load or our applied load, and the units in parentheses or pounds force. And over here, we can do the same thing. I'm going to select all of that, and this was the output voltage and units of volts. Typically, we put the symbol um, that represents the uh, that represents the unit as opposed to writing it out. Um, okay, so we're getting better. We're making things look a little bit better here. All right, some other things that uh, we typically do. Um, the first thing is is we usually want the axis to be on the lowest part, uh, so we don't have this dangling negative down here uh, with the uh, with the axis uh, intersecting at zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the axis um, and I'm going to uh, format the axis uh, using the right click. Okay, so I want to uh, make these values fixed uh, so that they don't move once I'm um, confident that that's uh, what we want to have. And uh, the horizontal axis where that crosses, I'm going to select that and change it to be the minimum value on my graph, 0.2. All right, and you can see that once we do that, um, it's going to move it so that the uh, lower horizontal axis uh, crosses at the minimum point of the graph. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click, uh, with, with the format axis still open, I'm going to click on the uh, horizontal axis, and I see that it has um, a maximum of 30 to it, but we don't really need to go all the way out to 30 because our data ends at 25. So to maximize or uh, use the most space for showing the data without having white space at the end, I'm going to change that fixed data point to 25. So now we can see um, all of the data. Uh, that that was used. Okay, almost done here. Um, the next thing that I want to do is I want to format the plot area. Um, what I want to do is add a border um, all the way around. I want to add a solid line and I want to make sure that that solid line is black. Usually that's the way that we do. 
um, for preparing for um, publication uh, quality graphs. Okay, so now we have an outline view all the way around the graph. We have our, our axes labeled. Um, let's see, format axis. Let's make sure that the line color um, is, again, black. And it was gray before, I believe. Oops. Um, sorry. Uh, solid line. Make sure it's black. Okay. All right. So we're almost there. The other thing that I would recommend is, unless you need color, I would not uh, print in color. Um, I would select the data and format the data series. You see that uh, the points here are pretty large. So let's go to marker options and let's use a built-in variety. If you have different data sets, again, you'll, you may need to make them look different colors, but they're pretty large right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change their size so that uh, they're not overrepresented on the graph. We still want to be able to see the data points, but um, but they don't need to take up so much space. It implies that they are, are much more important. Uh, there's much more information there than there really than there really is. So um, if we again click on the marker options, maybe a point size of four or something like that. I like to use the round data points if there's um, not. Uh, if they're um, if that's the only uh, data set that you have available, I also like to uh, fill the data points with um, something simple like black, and uh, change the marker line color to no line so that again they're not quite as thick and obtrusive. Okay, so that's getting closer to looking like something that we would uh, publish in a in a journal article or uh, in a nice lab report or um, capstone project report. Um, the other thing is that uh, I like to make the charts, um, the fonts of the charts consistent with um, uh, the formatting that's in the text. Um, so if you want, what we can do is um, select uh, the design again or select the entire chart go back to the home page and this change um, most of the time we um, oops sorry we can change the different fonts you see here to match whatever font we're using in our um, report All right. um, the other thing then is uh, let's see um, let's format the chart area again and I accidentally changed the border so that it was a solid border. I want to make sure that there's no border around the outside edge of my graph here. Okay. Now that I've done that, I think we're pretty much ready. Um, some other things you may want to do is you may want to um, increase the size of your axis labels so that they stand out uh, when you put them into your graph, or when, excuse me, when you put them into your document. Um, Okay, and make sure everything's a nice consistent size. For my best fit equation here, I'm going to increase the size of the font there a little bit too so that it stands out well. And then what I want to do is uh, if I'm using Microsoft Word here, um, I'm going to uh, open up Word and take my graph. Now Excel will tie things uh, between the um, between Excel and um, and your Microsoft Word document, um, but uh, I prefer not to do that because it takes up uh, it, it can cause your uh, data files or your um, your files to take a long time to open. Uh, so what we can do is we can just copy um, our graph here. Oops. Okay, I'm going to copy the graph, and then I'm going to come into Microsoft Excel. I can paste directly, and what that's going to do is that's going to link me um, back to this graph, which actually links back to the spreadsheet. Um, instead, what I suggest you do is you, uh, down in the corner here, you go to Paste Options and just paste this um, as a picture. That way it doesn't carry all of the data with the... Um, uh, with the uh, chart, um, and that just kind of speeds things up, especially if you have large charts that have uh, thousands upon thousands of data points. It just makes the uh, file a lot uh, easier to load. 
Um, it looks like something didn't happen correctly here. This is 20, this is 14. So I want to make my uh, headings, excuse me, my axis labels about the same size. Okay, so let's try that again. I will copy, I will paste, I will paste it as a picture. And there we go. We're uh, we're all set. And now underneath that, there's room that we can uh, write our uh, figure caption. Let's see, linear calibration of a load cell. I probably shouldn't have capitalized those. Okay, there we go. So now we are um, now we have our image. We have our caption underneath of it. We can uh, we can center the image. Um, we can uh, arrange the um, figure caption however is appropriate for um, for the document that you're needing to write and prepare. All right. There we go. So that's how we can take a default. Um, Excel chart and make it uh, and pretty it up so that it can be uh, useful in your technical documents.